It's May 1st, 2012. I'm Curtis Hollister, and you're watching The Quarter on Investor Candy TV. We're, today, we're going to be talking about a company that's touched almost everybody on the internet. Amazon, trading under the symbol AMZN, has, has started with the uh, logistics and selling of books and has now moved into cloud computing, uh, launched a Kindle, and just recently announced uh, quarterly results that beat expectations by a long shot. Joining me to talk about the company is Dana Blankenhorn, a co top contributor on Seeking Alpha and TheStreet.com. Dana, welcome to the show. Good to be here. So, Dana, um, Amazon have beat uh, uh, their earnings expectations by the street quite significantly. Um, their stock has risen, you know, dramatically uh, since the beginning of the year. They're over up over thirty percent um, um, at the beginning of the year, and over the last year, they're basically up over one hundred and fifty percent. These guys are are basically in a lot of different businesses. Why don't you talk about that? Well, you know, this is an interesting company because you know, they were one of the uh, the main uh, drivers of the dot-com boom of the 1990s. So I wrote about them a lot. And when it all came crashing down, Amazon is one of the very few that was left. Uh, it turned out that they did have a strategy. And um, they were also very smart in borrowing the strategy. Uh, Google really invented the cloud, but Amazon made it pay. Uh, the cloud is a series of techniques that you use to virtualize things, to use distributed computing, to basically save a lot of work in the computer room. Amazon uh, has always scaled its cloud to do actual work and make actual money. Uh, they were the first company to uh, start selling access to their cloud uh, through Amazon Web Server Services, and they define what cloud computing really is uh, at that infrastructure level. Their APIs are the industry standard. Well, and, you know, one thing that strikes me with this company, uh, since, you know, the, the beginning of the dot-com boom, is that these guys are very entrepreneurial, and they, are, they, they must be, because they start so many little businesses that become big businesses within their infrastructure. So once they kind of master something, they, they, they start to monetize it. You've mentioned the cloud, which is really just the new way of saying online. All companies will effectively be running their applications and services in this efficient environment that is the cloud. But these guys have Mechanical Turks, which is a very inexpensive way of bidding for work for, you say, I want to do job X to collect data. It's five cents per data per entry. They've got that service. You want to order books online or movies or digital assets? They've got that. They've got the only real competing product, you know, in all reality, with uh, mm -hmm. I, the Apple's iPad. I mean, nobody's really competing with them the way that the Kindle is. And it started off with the fact that people like their Kindle. That says a lot about a company that can do all of these different things, uh, including basically the the ability to, to have any merchant that has something for sale go into their online environment and use the Amazon logistics system to kind of, you know, uh, credentialize the, the delivery and sale of those products. I mean, these guys are in, have their hands in so many aspects of the web. Yeah. Let me give you one quick example of, of uh, how they do it. For years, um, many people were saying, oh, when Amazon has to start paying sales tax, when Amazon has to start paying sales tax, they'll lose their advantage. They'll start losing money. They'll lose customers. Well, Amazon found a way to make that pay. Hmm. They charge sales tax for other web merchants. They have the most efficient internet infrastructure for them. So they take a cut of the sales taxes that they're paying for other people. Uh, and so essentially what everybody thought was going to be a problem for them turned out to be an opportunity. And any of those merchants that don't follow the standards for customer service and delivery of the products that Amazon has laid out, they get booted off the system. I mean, that's that's effectively their long run kind of model. Effectively, is that you know, th this is this is where anybody can do business, but you have to do business at a certain quality. And I think that people like that. Right. And now, uh, just this last couple of weeks, they announced a new service that is going to compete in business. Uh, logistical products uh, competing directly with WW Granger. That's a company that has done things right for a long, long time, starting in the old days of the catalog, moving online very effectively, mm -hmm. uh, having their own stores. But uh, Amazon's going up against them, and you know Granger's down because now people realize. Now the one problem for investors 
is that this stock is priced to perfection. I mean, which means they have to absolutely execute in every way uh, or else uh, they're going to collapse, uh, really. Right now, uh, they're selling at something like 200 times last quarter's earnings. Mm -hmm. They zoomed up uh, about uh, uh, $30 a share off of their last quarter. They were priced at something like uh, 120 times earnings then. Now they're priced at an even higher multiple of earnings. So, you know, you're really having to pay up, but it, you pay up for quality. And uh, it's a momentum stock. Uh, they've come good for so many investors over the years that um, a lot of people are willing to spend what it takes to get in. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of people that said, oh, you know, at $100, they're not going to go any farther. At $200, they're trading around $230 plus right now, almost $240. I mean, uh, co companies that have momentum like this, people typically like to ride that, even if the numbers are, are not realistic. Like, I mean, 190 times uh, PE ratio is, I mean, that that's a big number. That's a, a, a monster number. But Yeah, I got in at, at 180 and uh, last year, and I thought I was stupid. I got hammered at Seeking Alpha by a lot of the so-called experts for buying in at such a high price. But I said, look, they've come good for so many people over the years. They're going to come good for me. Mm. They're up 50 bucks. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, uh, talking a little bit about some of their products, one of the things that everyone's kind of mentioning is the fact that out of all the Android tablets, people, 50% of the people want to buy a Kindle, the Kindle Fire in this case. And, and, and that's becoming a delivery mechanism, much the same way that Apple has done for their digital content, their books, their movies, their whatever they can sell, all things digital and pizza. Um, what does this mean? Does this just mean that they're the best Android solution out there, or is that a better product? Uh, no, they they priced it very, very aggressively. Uh, they priced it at about $200. They might have been losing money when they priced it there, but they know that uh, computer chips and other products lose value as they're, on the, as they're on the warehouse shelf. They're probably making some money on the Kindle right now, but the main thing about the Kindle is that it's a channel, not just a digital product but for all kinds of products. Mm. If you're a member of their Amazon Prime service, for instance, you may have joined it two years ago uh, in order to get a discount on shipping. Okay, They, they will give you free two-day shipping on, on your orders uh, for a year for 79 bucks. Well, they've now added some free video to that, which means now you're using the Kindle to get a free video. Well, then they sell you other videos. Then they sell you other products. Mm -hmm. and pretty soon... You don't just have um, a, a, a tablet in your hand. What you have is a way to buy stuff. Now, if we think about the amazing kind of, I mean, what I see these guys as, as a very entrepreneurial group that is a logistics um, behemoth. Like they really know how to like make the logistics work. You know, although their websites are incredibly dense with content, you know, from the point of view, compared to the simplicity of other websites. Um, the whole back end of that, that process works so well. But what they don't seem to have is the community that a Facebook has or the community that a LinkedIn has. What happens, I mean, are they going to start to seek those things out? Like, or is their community really the Kindle? Well, in the beginning, in the 1990s, they're actually the first community site. They encouraged people to create their own reviews of products and services and uh, collected them and, and offered them to people. Now, over the, over the years, uh, a lot of folks have learned how to game that system, and so their reviews aren't as trusted, uh, perhaps, as they were in the beginning. But uh, one thing I will say is I think they've got an opportunity there uh, to grow more community. Uh, I think they've got an opportunity to uh, become uh, a publisher uh, of all kinds of digital content. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been advocating for years that they should buy a publisher, not so much for the asset of, of the publisher, but for the publisher himself, who can make the deals with writers, who can you know get that stuff out the door as a digital file, as an ebook. Uh, and they are now starting to produce movies, videos uh, yeah. of their own. So there are all sorts of areas where they can go up the stack, up the chain of value now that they have this channel in front of them. 
Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, I see that I, I, I don't see their future stopping anytime soon just because there's so many different organizations vested in their future and, and their success. Um, you know, people position Amazon, Google, Facebook, and Apple as the kind of like, you know, horses of the future. You know, I was going to say apocalypse, but that doesn't seem quite appropriate. <laughs> but I mean, the, the, the horses for nerd apocalypse. But, but they're the companies that we're all going to be basically dealing with in perpetuity um, like, or, or certainty. There, there's going to be some certainty around uh, every online user touching those companies. You know what they are? They're Sears. You know, back in the day, mm -hmm. back 100 years ago, when the Sears catalog showed up, uh, everybody would grab the Sears catalog and that would define what people would pay. And, and later on, Walmart became Sears. Everybody goes to Walmart knowing that they're going to get the, be the biggest selection and the best prices. Amazon has better selection and competitive prices. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to go out. It comes to you. So uh, they are uh, taking that role in the 21st century. Anything else we want to talk about with these guys? Uh, I don't know if you want to buy it today, but gee whiz, you know, I didn't think I wanted to buy it six months ago. I think this is, whether you buy it or not, this is a company that's just worth watching um, because they're setting the tone and the pace of the race for the internet itself. I mean, they're definitely, uh, they've got the baton. And um, I mean, Jeff Bezos needs, he, he needs a ton of credit, obviously. He deserves a ton of credit for everything he's done. He's had the longevity that, um, you know, few CEOs have. People are beginning to realize that Jeff Bezos is the new Steve Jobs. Yeah, I, I, I concur. I mean, um, he's a very quiet, quiet uh, um, spoken guy, but geez, I mean, look at what he's done. This just, just doesn't happen by accident. No. No, it, 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 he is the uh, most effective tech entrepreneur we have in America, uh, and uh, we're lucky to have him. I agree. He could I... be Chinese. <laughs> okay, Dana, thanks so much for your time yet again. Thank you. If you'd like more information on Dana Blankenhorn, you can visit his blog on Seeking Alpha or any of the articles he's published on thestreet.com. If you'd like more videos from public issuers or industry experts, you can visit Investor Candy TV. I'm Curtis Hollister. Thanks so much for watching The Quarter.